Lee, the mold and die sector. Now, this is one of your um, focus areas within, within the business, the large part machining systems um, area. Um, you do some pretty tasty parts in the mold and die sector, don't you? You machine them. We do. Um, uh, and we're focusing on large parts here, but we also make some small parts in the mold and die sector as well, where we may use the Hecate compact range. And then we manufacture large parts such as that, that, that you've seen on the screen today, where we, we may be uh, machine a whole car, if you like, out of, a, out of a big block of aluminium or molds for car parts or aerospace parts. And what do those molds need? You know, when you look at a whole car, for example, someone that's watching that drives a car might not even think, begin to think, you know, of, of how this, you know, this begins to start being manufactured. So what does the mold need as a finished part? And how do you get to that? Well, Aesthetically, they need to look perfect. So off the machine, they need to come off completely perfect. Where the tools have changed, there need to be no blends and mismatches and the surface finish needs to look exceptional. But of course, they also need to be ultra accurate as well. Why do they need to have this exceptional surface finish though? I get the accuracy, but where does the surface finish come in? Well, if, well, if you make a mold and then you produce something in that mold, any imperfections are gonna come on your finished product. So that surface needs to be absolutely perfect. And if that surface has to be treated at all afterwards, um, you don't want to be polishing out huge errors. You, you just want to be buffing up that surface. So it's really important that quality is perfect. And when you compare then, Lee, and you talk about you know, small moulds compared to big ones, I'm guessing, and I might be wrong, that a smaller mould is easier to manage than a much bigger one. So how do you maintain this precision over such a large working area? What machine do you use and how does it achieve such good results? Well, I would disagree with the small moulds. They also have to be perfect and they're machined on Hecate type compact machining centres, ultra, ultra precision machining centres. It's more difficult on the larger machines to maintain the accuracy and the pace that you need to travel the axes over the surface up to, to achieve the speeds. So we, we have an overhead gantry machine, very, very rigid design, the FOGS machine. And um, we have to enable um, the, the tool to repeat. So if you, if you send a machine to a position and back again and then back again, it has to go to exactly the same place. As long as your machine's rigid and it's reliable with its positioning, you can then track any inaccuracies and all machines have some inaccuracies. So we have a very advanced mechanical system and then we sit a level on top of that when required where we can actually map the volumetrics of the machine envelope and we can compensate any accuracies. So when we do a tool change, we've got control of the, the thermal behavior of the machine, the mechanical behavior of the machine, how it's behaving in that whole environment. And we get literally perfect blends across the surfaces. You know, you can hold them up and see your face in them. They look that good. And do you, do you talk about thermal though? Does it have to be a certain environment that these machines are put in? Do you have to have temperature control? Or the machines that advanced that actually they can accommodate any fluctuation in the environment? It's both. In some cases, we do have to have the machines inside an environment. It depends on where the machines are in the world and, and the fluctuation in the environment within the shop. But in some machines, in some areas, we don't. So we have very, very good controls of the process within the machining environment. But for sure, if we've got big temperature fluctuations, we put them in a, in a chiller box.